Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another. Oh, wow! Moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. We've learned that sodas are carbonated. They have carbon dioxide dissolved in them. We've learned that carbonation is unstable. The carbon dioxide wants to come out a solution. And we've learned that providing a site for nucleation, such as the Mentos with its micro-sized pits, allows for dramatic release of carbon dioxide. So do you think it matters how many Mentos you use? Or what type of soda you use? Or what the temperature of the soda is? Hmm. So today we're gonna to test one of the questions. Hey, let's go find out if the type of soda affects the height of the geyser. Okay, sure. You may notice we're using diet sodas. Regular sodas work, but they have sugar, which makes it sticky and attracts bugs, and we don't want that. Well, help! Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous, so always have a responsible adult helping you. When doing experiments, it's important to do a controlled experiment. That means you only change one variable, in this case, the brand of soda. So all sodas tested are stored at the same temperature. We also use the same number of Mentos in each test. Finally, we repeat each test and take the average height in case of other variables. Oh, and you may notice we made one adjustment to our homemade soda geyser generator. We added a nozzle to the end to make the spray more dramatic and easier to measure. To do this, just add one more 3 quarter inch slip to threaded PVC adapter and attach a thin hose nozzle. Looks like Dyke. We're not going to tell you the answer. Go find out for yourself. What are the best brands to make soda geysers? What should we test next? Well, let's test. Join us next Saturday for part five of our series as we explore how the number of Mentos affect our soda geysers. This has been another Oh Wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. <laughs>